Okay, we're getting there now. So we've covered cranial nerves one, two, three, four, and six. But we've missed five. We've missed five because it falls out of order. So it makes sense to stay with all the muscles involved with the eye. So, so we've done cranial nerves one, two, three, four, and six, but we've missed out five. Now, I think it makes sense to examine two to six all together because they're all focused very much with the eye. We do appreciate that there's a small amount of motor involvement from cranial nerve three being able to constrict the pupil, but cranial nerve five stands on its own away from the eye in many ways. So cranial nerve 5 is mainly a sensory nerve, having sensation across the face, but there is also a small motor component affecting the muscles that we chew with, the muscles of mastication. In terms of the muscles of mastication, the trigeminal nerve innervates the temporalis, the masseter, and inside the pterygoid muscles, which are involved in moving the jaw side to side which is why when testing it, we get the patient to bite down once, bite down twice, and then wiggle their jaw side to side. But in terms of assessing, we need to have a blunt object and some cotton wool. And what we're going to do is we twizzle it to get a point. We get the patient to close their eyes as we um, check their sensation so that they're not given any extra clues by seeing us approach them. And then we use that point of cotton wool to assess the three regions where the trigeminal nerve provides sensation to the face. The sensory branches of the trigeminal nerve are considered to be V1, V2 and V3. More easily described, these are the ophthalmic region, the maxillary region and the mandibular region. Crucially for this, we don't stroke the patient. It's just a simple touch and down, touch and down, touch and gone. And the same is true for when we use our sharp object. When testing the neurotip, it's important to demonstrate on the patient's finger what it feels like, so that there's no worry in the patient's mind when you're doing the examination. And the same is true for when we use our sharp object, our neurotip. It's a light touch. We're not causing any pain or discomfort to the patient as we do so. Now we're going to look at the, your sense of sensation on your face. Mm -hmm. So I've got a little point here, but it is bluntened. If I could have a finger. Okay, so you can see you can feel it, but it isn't sharp. Yeah. Okay, if you close your eyes and tell me when you feel it. Yep. 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 In terms of checking the uh, corneal reflex, which is part of trigeminal nerve 5 examination, obviously it is the cranial nerve 5 that is transmitting the sensation from the cornea, and it is the oculomotor nerve which is allowing the blink. We're going to take the twizzled cotton and come into the side, just touching over the cornea. We don't want to come in from the front because the patient will see us and will likely blink anyway. We may find that ladies and chaps who wear contact lenses actually lose their corneal reflex because they're used to having something on their eyes anyway. Okay, and now we're going to see um, what the sensation on your eyes are like. Okay, so I've got a bit of cotton wool, and if you could look all the way to that side for me, and I'm just going to bring this in from the side, I'm just going to touch the side of your eye. That's fine. And we're going to do the same if you could look over that way. I'm just going to come in from the side and then just touch in. Okay, super, thank you very much. Sometimes a jaw jerk is tested where we get the patient to relax and then strike the tendon hammer over the bottom of their face. In most patients, we should not expect to find the mouth closing in response to that reflex.
finally, if you could try and relax your jaw for me. I'm just going to tap over your jaw. Okay. One of the commonest causes of a problem with cranial nerve 5, which you can see here, this large nerve, is a tumour coming from cranial nerve 8. And you can see how close they are. Bizarrely, a cranial nerve 5 lesion, one of the first things to show up, may actually be a hearing loss due to an acoustic neuroma affecting the ear, which is then leading to press on cranial nerve 5, hence highlighting why all the cranial nerves should be tested together. This acoustic neuroma is one of the few areas that may give rise to the loss of the jaw jerk reflex early on as a presentation. Cranial nerve 8 uh, tumours, so acoustic neuromas and the like, account for 5% of all tumours and grow in this region, hence the greater likelihood of significant pressure going on cranial nerve 5. Finally, to complete the trigeminal nerve examination, some examiners will perform a glabella tap. Tapping on the forehead should elicit a blink response from the patient. Whilst the glabella tap reflex can be overcome by multiple tapping of the forehead, it is seen to be absent in patients that have frontal release issues and is sometimes seen in patients who have Parkinson's disease, i.e. you tap the forehead and there is no response. This glabella tap reflex shows how interconnected cranial nerve 5 and cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, are. The glabella reflex relies on both cranial nerve 5 and cranial nerve 7, as cranial nerve 5 provides the afferent fibres, i.e. the sensation fibres, and it is cranial nerve 7 that is providing the efferent or exit fibres. Now, I'd like to tap on your forehead. Just relax for me. Okay, so we've got a nice blink there. That's good.